or make a bunch of sets of rattling antlers off the sheds off our farms and we give them away. But for right now, somebody who comments on this video will send him a set of uh, rattling antlers that we'll, we're gonna be making here. Oh, custom me. Thanks again for watching. <laughs> Haven't been 150 yards yet and I found three. They're shedding really early this year and I assume that's because it's such a dry year. Good girl! I remember like the first time I found them, like that's the bug I want to shoot out of all of the ones I was hunting. come up through this way and there's that nine that big nine that had two kickers on and so he always was going in and out and he shed way early and I we haven't seen him out here or anything so they might be in there but just they take from that side and just take a chunk in there because that's where most of them go in bed um, looking like a new and ignite I really like that <laughs> Good girl. Here. Here. Good girl. There's this guy. Where is it? Good girl. And he broke up good. Here. Good girl. Both right next to each other. Yeah. Yeah, that's what like Lee Ellis called me this morning. He has a big one that that uh, just came out last night. He was there yesterday morning and had both sides. And then this morning, or last night, one in the morning, he came out with none on it. So you better get there because you normally, you know, the heavier they are, like them to shake them off, you know, they'll be close to each other. Hey everyone, you know, we say it all the time. It's like, okay, hunting season's over, now what? And really, the thing that a lot of people don't understand, like this to me is my most important time of the year, really. I mean, this is the time the deer are in the worst shape. They, they need the most food and nutrients right now to, to rebuild that body so they can put some, some their antlers back up. And this year, like I said, we just went out, we just literally walked, haven't been 150 yards yet and I found three. They're shedding really early this year and I assume that's because, you know, we had such a dry year. So even though you have feeders and stuff out, really, they only eat about 20% out of the feeders. About 80% will still be browsed and with the drought this year, they, I think there was just hardly any nutrients, you know, in the, in the, in the natural browse for them. And then with the EHD, you know, with our feeders, with that TX4 technology that's in the pellets, it's basically like a, a an EHD vaccine. So, but you know, you still just don't know how much they have to eat and how often they have to eat there and stuff. But all of our bucks that were basically regulars at our feeders, you know, during the summer made it, except for a couple that were just kind of sporadic. And the thing that really stinks, George is up shed hunting on the north end here. He just found uh, drop tine eight, which is one of our megas that we kind of we we're actually hunting him something this year. But I would even like to have seen him get to six. He was only five, and found him dead in the creek. But we, uh, you know, he was alive. We watched him breeding does and everything into and late into November, and you know, I had one picture of him going out of there and never saw him again. I assumed somebody shot him, but there he was dead. So you don't know if that's you know, from EHD, just catching up with him or what. But again, he was always so regular. And this last year, he was just very sporadic and just not at the feeders and was someplace else. So he was pretty vulnerable to EHD. So we'll have to probably take a look at him and see if he was maybe shot, maybe somebody hit him or, or what. But uh, so right now what I'm doing is I go to all of my farms right now and I'm seeing how much, how much food I have left. Like there's still some standing corn here. I see how much um, I have left. I want to make sure that they've got enough food to green up. And now we're just in the first weeks of February, so there's a long way to go still. So checking all of them, see how much food I have. And if there's any place where it has run out of food, well then I'll just have to get feeders going already. And I really don't want to. I mean, it's expensive to run those things. So you want to keep as much food as you can, try to make it last as long as you can. So this is this was two feet of snow the last time I was out here. I actually did a little post, you know, knocking over some of this corn the snow was two feet tall in this so you can see the last piece i did and just the deer tracks have just been hammering it in here so that's what we're doing today anyway we're looking for uh 
looking for sheds a lot of them dropped early this year and I assume because some of them were in poor health from like I said with the poor nutrition basically over the summer and for EHD I'm sure there's a lot of them that had EHD that uh, survived it and that's why right now I really want to pour nutrients to them get the mineral blocks out and, and make sure they have plenty of food and as soon as like the natural like our corn fields and bean fields and turnip fields stuff run out then we'll uh, get back after it and get the feeders going again so that's what we're doing today just out uh, looking for some sheds but it's super important to make sure this time of year is when we can bring deer in from all over because there's nobody else around here. you look for thousands of acres around there's nothing so we bring a ton of deer in from neighboring properties that have never been here that's where we'll always find sheds of deer that say where'd that deer come from but so that's like the one time that you can get neighboring deer onto your farm and then if you have done a good job of maybe taking out some of your old bully bucks and your management bucks, they'll stay. The only reason that they leave is because there's other bucks on top of them. You know, old, old bucks there already and that, that move them out. So that's what we always try to do, try to take out our management bucks, you know, those old ones like that. And especially certain places that have like even a three or four year old phenomenal buck that's just huge. You know, it's going to be great genetics. We really, especially on those areas, try to keep them there. You know, even if there's good five-year-old bucks that you like to get to six, we just take them out just to make sure that they, they're they not going to get run out by something there. So that's what I uh, said. We're going to see what we got. Here we're going to pick up some sheds, check all the farms, see how much food we have left now that we can get around that the snow has melted. And uh, just kind of go from there and kind of start our, start our strategy. You know, our strategy starts right now. You know, it started basically on January 11th after the day after the hunting season, kind of seeing what we had and what our plans were for next year and how much food we had and what we're going to do so let's go out and see if we can find some sheds and uh we'll take it from there come on sky let's go find some Are there any out here All right, we're standing where, you know, if you're watching our YouTube series, you, you know, see earlier last year, you know, building this pond and, you know, we kind of wanted the redneck right there and kind of set this up for, uh, for hunting one, a couple of our big ones here and uh, especially Gomez. And even though Tiffany didn't kill him right here, it was just right there. He walked right through here. It would have worked perfectly if she would have been, the wind would have been right and been sitting right there. He walked right through here and came around and just shot him out in the cornfield right there. But as you can see, you know just with even how little bit of rain we've had just in you know from last year and the one <laughs> and one big snowfall you know it's it's about half full so it's by i think by the summer the thing should be full and there's plenty of water in there it's not going to go dry um and just the way the deer used it this year it was like perfect and pretty surprised even at our perfect 10 field here it was so dry you just didn't seem like you hardly grew anything but you look out there all the turnips and radishes out there there's quite a few you see they're all eating the tops off them and stuff so we this this end of the farm is looking really good right now there's still plenty of corn standing that i have that will last a while the turnip and all the snow is off it's buried under two feet of snow so it's hard for them to get to that they have all the the turnips still the green some of the green tops on this so we're actually looking good for food right here i don't need to worry about feeders at all right here um, at the moment so hopefully you'd love everything to kind of last till green up but you know not all the farms are that way you don't always have big enough you know field food plots that you can have six and eight and ten acres of standing corn to last because otherwise if you just have a couple you know a couple acres it normally never lasts and never even puts ears on normally they wipe it up it, you know by the time it even starts growing so want a couple a couple more horns in there we'll just keep looking there's still a ton of them up I mean it's early it's February 1st normally I don't even start hitting the the woods or doing anything like that until about February 25th or 26th I kind of you know, look at the cameras and I figure I have about 80 or 90 percent down by then but right now we probably have 60 or 70 percent down they just dropped very early this year so I figure better get out and uh, see if we can pick up see what's here still have all the cameras we know which ones are still carrying some of our big ones but there's a lot of our big ones that are down too so we'll keep looking come on Sky no cold funds for you Grizz uh -huh. Is 
so many good genetic ones, and that's where, I'm, that's where they go. Yeah. Really stinks, but like over the years, he'd been so such a regular. One you find there's a couple in the. Hey, look at that. Right, mute or something. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Got the chicken coop. All right. Well, we're just gonna go look because if we wait for mom, we might be, be dark by that time. So we'll just tell tell mom we're gonna go to the north end of Smith and just have her text me when uh, when you guys are leaving and we can go find some we can go to a different farm too. All right, we'll see you soon, buddy. All right, love you. Bye. Let's get the chicken coop. Sweet, sweet message, Joe. Yeah, let's start. All right. Yeah. Reggie's like, it's good. I'm like, oh, yeah. finally! I got the thumbs up. I'm gonna need that recipe then. <laughs> need to get a Dutch oven. Mm. Did I hear the bad news? Ah, we kind of thought it. Yeah, well, I, I figured but somebody had shot him, you know. Of our big bucks died. But now it's just like, I God, imagine. I wish you would have shot him when he was at 50 at the farm. I know! Uh, well, we I knew tell it, you though. that field, I tell you, is like just like the dream crushingest field ever. Yeah, well, you knew it. It's like shed season is going to be a sad shed season because it's all of them that are dead. Yeah. You know, the ones that we went missing, you just don't know. And you how know, long have you been there? I, I haven't seen it yet. Just George found that Where picture. Where is it, right, anyways? Right behind the Allen Redneck in the big ditch down there. He was right there the whole time. Uh, well, he's probably been dead as long as it was. We didn't see him. Yeah, the last picture, I mean, he was here, and, you know, with that doe and stuff, and we, we saw him breeding that doe and stuff, and I actually, well, you know, Justin and I went down <laughs> below and hung a stand for him because he was coming out yeah. from behind the Jordan field and the pond and stuff down in there, and we saw the big 10 down there. We never saw him. Then that last picture, he went, he went by the top up here, he went by through the Allen field and he was heading north. And I was like, ah, oh, he probably went up there, maybe got killed, but he was probably just up there at the Allen and he just died right then. I don't know. Did they see any? He said he couldn't anything. notice anything. Uh, it's probably EHD. You know, just, it's so you know, weird though. I mean, like that late, it's like you would have You'll find him they... dead now. Like he, there's one, a shed buck down there dead. And those, those bad EHD years, some will make it through and then they just can't make it through the winter and they're just so wore down from rut and then get a cold spell like that and they just die from that too. But he found the one side of Kari's buck so he's just waiting for us. So I want you guys with we'll pile everybody. Sure. Um, in here. My sourdough was a hit. Do you want any? Otherwise I brought snacks. I'll try a little more. I can't until I get to 200. Carnivore until I get to 200. I'm at 209 so I got 9 pounds to go. Are you gained that much weight there? 209 is not bad. What do you think? 209 is like from 201 to 209 in six months. That's not bad, right? Yeah, that's pure muscle. Yeah. Hey, kiss ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that, that other heavy one that has the kind of goofy side on the other side. But I mean, it's good to have mass. There it is. Over. Good girl, guys. Good girl. Ooh, that's a good one. Good girl. Thank you. Good girl. That's the one you could have had. That's the yeah. But you know what? I am glad I did it. Yeah. He's just spindly. 
Yeah. It would have been. Yeah. It's been perfect. Like, it would have just been like, oh, ah, can you imagine what it would be at the end of the year? And he's sharp beam. Yeah. Still. I shed that. Let's go. Come on, Jet. Let's go. There it is. There it is. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, she's bringing us high. Oh, the, the Jet. Here, Jet. That's pretty cute, actually. Yeah. Good girl. Let's try it. Jetty's about. Oh, no. Yeah, look at this one. That's freaking awesome. Well, no, what deer is that? God, I hope he Yeah, that was Sari's deer. Yep. God, I hope he lives. Me too. I think the other side's going to be over there and up towards the blind because that's where he came. Just see it from down there because it's blind. It was like, I was like, oh, from like 100 yards away. Wow. That's too bad. You know, I knew. You know, figured we'd find both of these, and they see how sharp they are and stuff. Cause he, he was perfectly fine and healthy when he was like at our at at our feeder over the summer. They just disappeared, you know, sometime in like July, and I figured he was gone. And also, he just showed back up on one of our food pots um, in October, and he had a big swollen knee. And he was just limping, he wouldn't even put any weight on it. So this is the deer that Kari Rolls was out every day, saw him. Like Tom saw him a bunch of times, he just was never close enough, but just trying to uh, trying to shoot him because we knew he wouldn't make it. And, uh, you know, but finally, you know, he dropped one side and then he was way out there, like at 200 yards, and Kari took a pop at him and missed him, like the last day of the season. And then... The next day we came out during the late muzzleloader and he had both sides down already so it was like well, there's no sense of shooting a you know a phenomenal genetic deer like this um you know maybe there's a chance he'd make it and you see he was only a four-year-old but you see all the ribs and this stuff he would have this one would have blown this would be a 200 next year i bet he had everything that you'd want you know in a deer right there he's got height he's got stickers he's got big brows he's got long beams you know he's gonna be throwing more trash but of course just when I was walking through here, found him dead there too. And you can tell by that, you you know, the only shed buck that you find dead right now. Plus you can see he's got his big, big knob on his elbow, so he didn't make it. So that's just the tragedy of, of this game. You know, you've got so many of these great genetic deer like this, and it just shows you how hard it is to get, to get them to six years old or seven years old, even five years old, you know, to where they can put on their full potential and uh, you know, and then and then the harvest them on top of it. You know, the, those 200s are just hard to come by because they just die in so many, so many different ways that they can that they can die. And uh, here's another example of of one that that we lost. And you can see all, like I said, all the ribbing and stuff. What he would have done this year is just incredible. All right. Well, we should have, like you said, we should have brought a box of tissues with us because you know, drop time eight literally tiffany and i and justin were sitting to have sitting in the tree saddle in there and he came out across and he was like at 60 or 70 we thought he'd come back in and then we went to, literally the next day when put a stand up where he was becoming behind that pond and then because he'd been in with a doe in there like for 10 days i mean he was just so regular every day but tiffany just could never get a shot at him and then we had a picture of him at the top of that big field and then right here in the corner of this field and this is this is farther west from over there and where he lived all summer you could see him he was in the fields up here on our neighbors to the north we figured maybe he went back up there and was gonna you know you know try to look for does there we figured he'd always come back and we never saw him again so i figured maybe he went up there and maybe somebody shot him or something and of course where george was walking through here looking for for sheds and found him dead in the creek so you know, just a lot of times like EHD doesn't kill them right away. Like some of them live through it, some of them die later. And there's times that you find a lot of dead shed bucks even. They, they make it all the way through and just in their, the worst shape, they run down and they get a cold snap and boom, they're dead like that. So it's sad, but you know, we had all, you know, all kinds of opportunities that we could have shot them, but I was hunting for Twin Towers the whole time and when he was out every day here. but. We kind of wanted, he was only five, we kind of wanted to let him go to six anyway, but that's the way it goes, you know. He said this, it's sad, but they keep making more. Let's go take a look at him. Good job, Ryder.
Jack, you didn't that here. Thank you. And I was up there. Oh. And I looked and I was just like, no. Really? Yep, that's like, the one that I was after. It had that 51 yards. I know. I... Yeah. yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I had lots of encounters with him. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you just, I bet you you had. Just, you know, coming down like this in the cool water and stuff like that and just, you know. What a cool buff, man. What a shame. Guess you're not the way you want to see him die. Look at that deer. Yeah. God, look at the head. I know. That's what I. When I. That's a. That was the one thing that really shocked me. I was like, yeah. his head is Yeah, I know. Probably a five-year-old on the neck and all that oh, stuff. Man. You know, we were assuming that he was. Nope. Go this guy. Well, it's funny because it's like. I remember like the first time I saw him, I was like, that's the buck I want to shoot out of all of the ones I was hunting. You yeah, know? we saw him from here at the nine point stand all the way down to the south end. And you're like, and I was like, yep, that's, that's him. Oh, man. That's a dandy. Yeah. Uh, I texted Flynn already, told him that he found himself to come and get a salvage tag. I said, we can't really get it off now. You're going to need a sawzall or something. It's like he's not, he's not eating at all hardly, you know. I don't know That's how long it's That's a big deer, there. isn't it? That's too bad, huh? No. And they almost wish you could do yeah. it like a narcropsy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I bet you it was. I bet you he had the HD. Would be my guess because he only we only had him like three times at the feeder here, where normally he just lives here. So he just wasn't eating the the analogic stuff this year. Only had just a little bit of it, and he just a big tear in his ear. Can't protect him that way, you know. Boy, it sure would have been nice to have him. <laughs> and even, even how like this kind of, like he has his black ends, he kind of broke that off and kind of like black and like they don't go ready, go get quite, him. Uh, oh, he did break some of that brow off, I didn't that. notice that. He's finding pictures and stuff, but he broke that. God, what a beast. Yeah, that's a dandy. Why not? He has such a cool face too, you know, with that dark forehead. Yeah. So many encounters with him last year. I mean, every day I saw him. I know it. Yeah, well. Yeah, that's one that you have to just have it, mount him and. I know. Mount like him. And we should have like a. Yeah. Oh my gosh, how cute are you? Hey everyone, well thanks for tuning in again. This, we just, this is just one farm. One one afternoon, basically, you know, looking. But we, there were some of them that we knew were down and, and things like that. And we found, you know, like this big ten that Tiffany had passed several times. I'm surprised we didn't find uh, splits. splits. But you know, we had some heartbreaks, like this, like you know, this one was one that had a bad knee and he was all skinny, and you know, and then we found the, the deer dead too. And so, but there's still some bright sides on the big heavy ones that you know have uh, you know, drop kinase and genetics and yeah. stuff. So. And stuff like this so it was overall a good day but uh like i said it's still early and there's, that, there's just not one farm so there's plenty more to go <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the new the new oh puppy gosh. and of course sky, sky has always did great but uh um, we said it was just one afternoon on one farm but we got a ton of sheds and what we're going to do is we've been making rattling antlers for everybody around here and uh we're gonna, I'm gonna go grab a bunch of sheds that we find. I was like, those are not gonna Yeah, be not these, yeah, won't not be those. <laughs> Shed, these aren't, you won't want these for rattlers anyway. But we find perfect ones for rattling antlers. What we're gonna do is over the whole season here, is we're gonna make a bunch of sets of rattling antlers off the sheds off our farms and be giving them away to, for different different posts. But for right now, for somebody who comments on this video, the first person today, who comments on this video. Not the first person, we'll just pick one. Well, maybe it's the first, whatever we decide, but somebody, who comments on this video will send him a set of uh, rattling antlers that we'll, we're gonna be making here. Oh, custom -made. Thanks again for watching.